Hi, I'm Tracy Schulsinger. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I practice functional medicine. And I want to explain to you a little bit about what functional medicine is. It's a question we hear all the time. So functional medicine is an approach to helping to correct, to heal, and perhaps to cure chronic healthcare issues. So people who seek functional medicine typically have been dealing with a healthcare issue for quite some time and their treatment has been unsuccessful. Usually they've gone and they've done like the traditional route of going through their primary care provider or their internist doing allopathic medicine, which is also called Western medicine, perhaps going to specialists, perhaps trying different things on their own and they're just not really making progress. And so with functional medicine, what we do is we really look for the root cause. And so when we find the root cause of what's causing a chronic issue, the issue then gets properly addressed and people start to get better. So how do we do that? Well, we ask a ton of questions. My intake, when I first see a new patient, um, it's, the paperwork takes people usually about an hour to complete. We send the paperwork through our, our electronic health record to you. And we wanna know about all of your symptoms, of course, like everything really, really matters. It helps us when we really understand the history and all of your symptoms to connect the dots and to figure out, okay, you know, what's going on? Where is it starting from? What are the factors involved, the triggers and the mediators and such? And sometimes things begin in childhood. Sometimes things begin even in utero. Sometimes we find out, oh, after this particular experience, like moving to a house or an accident or a particular stressful time of life or a, a change in age, everything started then and so it, it just gives us clues to help understand the timeline of when um, something may have started and sometimes that's that's really like the biggest clue and other times that's not really the clue it's not about a particular time um, but in that initial symptoms questionnaire um, it's a, called the medical symptoms questionnaire it's a standardized form and it's used by a lot of functional medicine practices i got it from the institute for functional medicine where I was trained and um, every single time I see somebody they do the form again and now that doesn't take an hour that's just one part of the intake but being able to see every single time how things are changing we get to track progress we get to see okay well in this form the answers in the GI section are the highest meaning the most symptoms so we want to really really focus there so it's part of the intake we also want to know about um, of course your chronic health issues and family history and all the medications you're taking and all the supplements you're taking and all the surgeries that you've had and what your goals are and what your beliefs are and we just really really want to thoroughly get to know you so that's listening that's exploring you so that's one way we get to the root cause is by just gathering a ton of information and really listening to you and getting to know you another way is by then taking that information and then ordering relevant tests. So relevant tests mean we suspect something and we want to confirm it with a test. So that could be a blood test, looking at vitamin levels, looking at thyroid levels, looking at hormone levels, looking at cardiometabolic levels. Cardiometabolic would be like your lipids and your inflammation markers and um, an advanced lipid test, meaning not just your total cholesterol, but the quality of your cholesterol particles. So um, those are all things that we can look at in the blood. We can also look at viral levels in the blood, viral titer, titer levels in the blood. And um, yeah, those are like the main, the main blood related tests. Um, if we're looking at hormones, so there's great tests for hormones with blood testing. There's also saliva testing and there's urine testing. So we choose based on what we're really looking for. If we're looking for inflammation, inflammation is really great to test in the blood. If we're looking for infections, it depends on where. If it's a GI related infection we're suspicious of, we'll order a stool study. Or if we think it's SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, I'll order a breath test. Um, so there's just a lot of different testing options. Um, other infections, mold, I'll order a urine test. If I'm looking for adrenals, which is related to energy and hormones, I'll do that through saliva. Um, if I'm 
going back to mold, there's also a, a sinus culture. So people who have chronic mold often have this uh, particular type of bacteria growing in their sinuses called marcons, and it's a type of staph infection. And if somebody has a mold, systemic mold issue, we also test for marcons. Or if somebody just has chronic sinusitis, chronic headaches, chronic pressure, chronic congestion, chronic <coughs> clearing of the throat because of post-nasal drainage, irritating the throat, um, there's lots of reasons why we may want to get a sinus culture. So as you've heard, there's many different an lab analyses and that helps us get to know you on the inside. So by listening to you and then by looking inside, we really can figure out so, so much. Um, another test I love is called the Nutra Eval, and that looks at nutritional deficiencies and genetic markers and organic acids. And another test I love is toxin testing. We do end up finding a lot of toxins in our patients um, because toxins can really give you chronic fatigue and hormonal imbalances and immune issues and cognitive issues and mood issues. So when people, we know that typically in Western medicine, allopathic medicine, toxins are not being tested. So a lot of times people come here already have and having um, received a workup from their provider. So we're, we're wanting to look and, and look for what hasn't already been investigated. So with toxins, we can measure heavy metal toxins, chemical toxins, glyphosate, and then um, there's actually biological toxins as well, which is mold is one of those, or Lyme disease is another one, and viruses are, are biological toxins, and co-infections, which are infections that coexist with Lyme disease. The tick usually carries those, so we'll test for that. So a huge part of helping you get better is knowing what's wrong in the first place. So we take a lot of time to really do that investigative process. And then once we figure out what's going on, then we go to the treatment. And the treatment always involves lifestyle. So lifestyle means how are you eating? What are you eating? Is the food you're eating causing more inflammation? Is it inflammatory type of food inherently? Or is it inflammatory to you? Inflammatory to you could mean you have a food intolerance or a food sensitivity or a full-blown food allergy and you just don't even know. So we test for that as well. And then we help advise you on how to reduce inflammation in your body by eating anti-inflammatory foods and by making sure the food you're eating is not inflammatory to you. Um, and that's a really important point because most people know that sugar is inflammatory or that gluten is inflammatory. And that's to, to a lot of people. Sugar and gluten are inflammatory to many, many, many people. but for some people, they might actually have an inflammatory response to avocado. Avocado is a super healthy food, but it may not be healthy for a, per, a certain individual. So we need to know that as well. And that's where this, um, the functional medicine approach is very individualized. So um, with lifestyle treatment, the, the diet is huge. And we also wanna make sure that the food you're eating has a lot of nutritional density and um, then we can get very specific. So some people might need a low FODMAP diet. Some people might need a mitochondria boosting diet. Some people might just need a gluten-free diet or a dairy-free diet. Some people may need an elimination diet. Um, so just it just depends on what we find, what somebody needs. Another aspect of lifestyle is stress. Stress is huge. Stress can be what causes a disease to, be, to begin or it can be the result of a disease or of a chronic symptom. You know, a chronic symptom such as fatigue, that causes a lot of stress. It causes physical stress in your body, and then it causes mental stress just because you don't feel good, not feeling good, and then all the ways that that affects your life and your family and your job and your concerns about your future, all of that causes stress. So we really focus a lot on how to relax your nervous system. So stress is all about the nervous system. We teach breath work. Um, we teach uh, how to be aware and how to be mindful so that your body gets into a parasympathetic dominant state. Um, the parasympathetic dominant state is what you need in order to heal. And so if we just do a bunch of tests and we recommend um, a diet change and recommend medications or supplements, but you're still, your nervous system is still way overdriven, it's gonna take a lot of time to heal. So 
you just need to be in a parasympathetic state to heal the best and the most thoroughly and the fastest. So we'll, we'll definitely cover that as well. We talk a lot about sleep. That also helps the, the parasympathetic nervous system be in a good relaxed state for healing is to get enough sleep. And we work a lot on people's sleep, making sure people can fall asleep easily and stay asleep easily and get enough sleep um, as far as hours. And so that's huge. And um, so that's the lifestyle. And then as far as the other treatment tools that we use, we love to use supplements as much as possible instead of medications. However, we, I do prescribe medications and there's some medications that are amazing and fantastic for people. But in general, people usually prefer supplements and I, I generally prefer how they work in the body. They work at a, at a deeper level, at a more foundational level, a more downstream level. Downstream means closer to the source. So for example, um, let's say we're treating acid reflux or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, we could just give somebody a PPI, which is a proton pump inhibitor, like um, Prevacid or Protonix, and that just basically helps the body to make less acid. So that works. However, we know that the long-term effects of that are, are not good. They're very concerning. They cause a lot of vitamin deficiencies, particularly B12 and calcium, but others as well. And long-term, that can affect your mood, um, that can affect your, your bone strength. There's a higher risk of developing osteoporosis when you've been on a PPI too long. And there's a higher risk of developing cognitive issues like Alzheimer's when you've been on a PPI too long because we need nutrition. We need, we need to be able to absorb our food properly to feed our brain. And so when we don't have enough stomach acid, then we don't break down our food properly and we don't absorb our food properly. And the PPIs were actually meant just to use for eight weeks to heal an ulcer, but people, um, they use them because of digestive issues that aren't properly addressed and then they feel better on them so they keep using them, but then over time it creates more complications. So the functional medicine way instead of working with that is of course we want people to feel better. That's always important to help somebody find relief right away, but we don't wanna harm them in the long run either. And so for over, for, for, for burning, for reflux, for GERD, we would want to look at whether there's food intolerances, whether there's stomach acid deficiency, whether there's pancreatic enzyme deficiency, um, whether it's just an, an overeating issue. So we really want to explore what is the root cause. And then when we can correct the root cause, the acid reflux will just go away and people won't be hooked on this medication that can cause too many issues in the long run. So that's just one example of treatment that we use. Um, and so the supplements that we'll use, they can be vitamins or minerals or enzymes or amino acids or botanicals like herbs and um, binders as well, probably uh, fatty acids as well. It's probably the, the bulk of them. And they're, for some people, um, because of their genetics or because of their lifestyle, they may need to be on certain supplements for a very, very long time. Um, for other people, it's just a short treatment course. So it just depends on what we're treating. One thing that we don't wanna do is we don't want to over-prescribe supplements. We don't wanna just put somebody on a bunch of supplements and then say, okay, that's it. Um, that's not really getting to the root. You know, We really wanna help people heal by using a combination of the lifestyle and the diet and the, and the physical activity movement and the parasympathetic um, rest. And so supplements help get us there faster, but we don't wanna just say, okay, you know, we're just gonna give you a bunch of supplements and that's it, because that's not really getting to the root. Um, and then medications. So I use medications a lot with people who have thyroid issues and hormonal imbalances. And um, for some people who have mold or some people who have Lyme, um, sometimes with high blood pressure, if we need to, or diabetes as well. And, and they're, they're a great tool when we need them. But again, we just prefer um, to use other means if possible. And oftentimes, you know, using them together with other things is, is how it is with a lot of conditions. Um, yeah, so then some of the big things that we treat a lot in this office and a functional medicine is really good for is treating hormonal imbalances and hormonal imbalances is like your sex hormones. So 
estrogen and progesterone and DHEA and testosterone for women or for men. And that can be um, just balancing your hormones or replacing your hormones. And that can be for women and men who are mid in their you know, 50s, 40s, menopause, andropause age, or even for women who are still menstruating and having just a really hard time with their cycles. And there's um, prescription medications or compounded medications or supplements that are great for that, plus lifestyle things. Also hormonal balancing refers to the thyroid. So we treat a lot of hypothyroidism here and a lot of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That's autoimmune cause of thyroid issues and often turns into hypothyroidism if it's not treated quick enough. And also with hormones, there's, there's insulin, so blood sugar abnormalities, insulin resistance, or prediabetes or diabetes. We have a lot of great success with that. And inflammatory conditions, and autoimmune conditions, and there's many, many of them, um, around 90 autoimmune conditions, and it's, um, it's wonderful. I love working with people who have autoimmune conditions because it's such a holistic approach. We wanna figure out what's in the body that shouldn't be there, what's in excess or what shouldn't be there at all, like a toxin, or what's in deficiency that should be there. And when we can just rebalance by taking out what's in excess and bringing in what's in deficiency, people heal very, very well. We've had lots of success with people um, reversing autoimmune conditions. And it's really satisfying because they often have been told that they have to learn to live with it and they're gonna just have to make the best of it because that's maybe what um, their provider learned in school. That's certainly what I learned in school. And so to, to now do functional medicine, it's just really empowering to have so many more tools and resources and to see people heal and I'm seeing a lot of providers, you know, now learning about this and the functional medicine trainings are just becoming bigger and bigger and there's more and more people there and it's just great to see medicine changing in this way. Um, we do a lot of work with the heart, so helping to treat heart disease, prevent heart disease, diagnose heart disease, and a lot of work with um, just overall fatigue, whether it's like a mitochondria issue or an adrenal issue or a hormonal imbalance or a sleep issue. There's so many things that cause fatigue and so we can really help restore people's energy by figuring out the cause and treating it effectively. We do a lot of work with mental health. So um, people who have depression or anxiety or insomnia, um, mood disorders we certainly can work with, but if, if it's like a, a real dominant mood disorder, I'd wanna make sure somebody also has psychiatric care and a therapist, and a therapist is always good anyways, even with depression and anxiety, which we treat a lot of here. But um, if it's a mood disorder, then it's good to be under psychiatric care as well. Um, but, uh, but a lot of the times with depression or anxiety, it can be an inflammation problem, inflammation in the brain causing those kinds of changes. Or it can be nutritional deficiencies or toxins or inflammation or infection. So we just figure out what it is and get it out and people do way, way better. We also work a lot with the brain. So we have a program in our office called Encore, and it's Encore is E-N for enabling, um, E-N-C-O for cognitive, and R-E for repair. So Encore is an acronym for enabling cognitive repair, and it's based off of the book um, called The End of Alzheimer's by Dr. Dale Bredesen. There's a program that's offered through the Institute for Functional Medicine that teaches you all about how to implement the end of Alzheimer's work. And so some of the practitioners that have worked here in the past have done that program. I've personally just read the book and taken some of the online courses I was intending on doing the program and then I ended up having a baby, so it got in the way of that. But um, what I found out was that I've already been doing all of this anyways because it's just functional medicine. It's, it's all about figuring out um, whether there's inflammation causing cognitive decline or Alzheimer's or whether there's toxins or whether there's nutritional deficiencies or whether there's hormonal imbalances or if it's because of a head injury, which we have a lot of great treatment for in this office, particularly because we have FSM, which stands for frequency specific microcurrent. So um, that's a whole other thing that I'll, I won't speak to that because it's really Dr. Jesse's area of expertise. Um, but I would recommend that you get to know FSM because it is incredible. Now that we have FSM in this office, I've been referring people where it's appropriate for, and they're really making huge progress. It's just, it's just really, really great. So um, 
kind of magical in a way because people um, heal so much faster than usual. Um, yeah, so hopefully that is really helpful. Oh, actually, I, I've missed something. Um, I've alluded to this, but another huge pillar of functional medicine is the gut, so gut health. And so that's why we talk about nutrition, that's why we talk about nutritional imbalances or nutritional deficiencies, inflammation, and um, studying the stool or looking for SIBO because when you have GI issues, dysbiosis, infections, um, overgrowth or undergrowth, that's what dysbiosis is. When you have that, it affects everything because of the gut-brain axis, which is the, the vagus nerve going from the gut, or actually from the brain to the gut and bacteria traveling back and forth. And the major, majority of your immune system activity is in your small intestine, 70%. And the majority of your serotonin, which is the neurotransmitter that makes you feel good and happy and balanced and relaxed and sleep through the night, Made, mo most of it's made in your small intestine, so we've got to work on the gut. The gut is super, super important, and there's many different ways to work on the gut. There's diet, there's also even sunlight. Sunlight's really important for your GI health, so we just have lots of great effective tools. Um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you a sense of what functional medicine is, and just to kind of sum it up in you know, a, a quick little phrase, in functional medicine, we want to get to the root cause of what's causing persistent health issues. We want to replace what is missing. We want to um, release what is in excess. And we want just your body to be in balance so that you live in a healthy body and your, your mind is, is feeling peaceful and, and happy and you, you feel at ease, you feel like you can trust your, your body to take care of yourself and your nervous system is nice and relaxed. So it's really a very holistic approach, very much centered on the body, mind, and emotional well-being. And here in this office, we also talk about spiritual matters. You know, not everybody wants to, not everybody's really thinking about that, but, but we certainly have a lot of um, training and experience and skills to be able to also include that because that's part of everybody that's part of you and some people when they are going through um, medical conditions prolonged medical conditions they start to have these existential questions like why is this happening and do I deserve this and is this because I did something wrong and not everybody has those questions but for people who do um, we're happy to, to discuss that with you and help you feel like even your, your spiritual health is a part of your care because whether whether you acknowledge it or not, it's there. And if you don't acknowledge it, that's totally fine. We're not here to push that on anybody at all. But for people who, who do have those questions and they want to have like a safe place to talk about that, we would love to talk about that as well. So I'll just finish up by just saying I wish you very well and take care.